Hello and welcome to Easy Introduction to Statistics. I'm Hobin Kwok and I'll be your instructor for this course. Today, we're going to delve into the fundamental concepts of statistics. If you're interested in machine learning, data analysis, or data science, understanding statistics is crucial as it provides the core principles and methodologies essential for these areas. Even if you haven't studied statistics formally, Having a grasp of basic statistics is increasingly vital in the data-driven world. Therefore, I'm confident that this lecture will serve as a solid base for your further exploration into machine learning and data science. To fully understand statistics, it's crucial to focus on the core concept that it is a discipline centered around dealing with data specifically extracting insights and deriving conclusions from data. Statistics is a very comprehensive field of study covering almost every aspect of data. The field of statistics is broad, encompassing various categories such as data sampling, data description, data analysis, and lastly, data inference, which entails making predictions or decisions based on data analysis. Additional subcategories within statistics include experiment design, an aspect that focuses on planning experiments in a manner that enables the statistical measurements of their effectiveness and facilitates the comparison of results. It involves planning and structuring experiments to effectively test hypotheses while controlling for variables that could affect the results. Data description, on the other hand, entails graphically or numerically portraying data to compare their characteristics, such as their distribution. Data inference is a statistical method used to make predictions based on available data. Additionally, there are several other subcategories in statistics including data sampling and the Bayesian approach, which offers a distinct perspective on data. These are just a few examples of the subcategories that make up the field of statistics. Throughout this lecture, rather than attempting to cover every aspect of statistics, our main focus will be on these two crucial subcategories, data description and inference. We won't delve into other areas such as experiment design, the Bayesian approach, or categorical data analysis for this course. By the end of this course, you'll possess a strong foundational understanding of these two categories at a basic level. Before we dive directly into statistics, let's first familiarize ourselves with some key terms used in the field. In statistics, terminology is crucial because it strictly distinguishes between the concepts of populations and samples. Indeed, in statistics, populations and samples are clearly differentiated. Suppose we identify a characteristic of a population and label it A. There will also be a corresponding A in samples. Although they are conceptually similar, the meanings or interpretations of A are significantly different. Theoretically, statistics is the study of populations using samples as a means to understand a population. The reason behind studying samples in statistics is to eventually generalize insights to the population. Therefore, the process of studying data typically begins in samples. Consequently, when making inferences about a population, we rely on information gathered from its samples. However, using population terminologies when discussing samples can lead to significant confusion. In summary, in statistics, it's essential to be careful when selecting terms as there are distinct terminologies for populations and samples. A population represents the entire group that a researcher wants to draw conclusions about or generalize findings to. The concept of a population is foundational in statistical analysis as it forms the basis for making inferences and drawing conclusions. 
The definition of a population is the entire set of individuals, items, or events that are of interest to a researcher. Next, a parameter is a numerical characteristic that describes a population. Parameters are key values that summarize important features of the entire population being studied. They provide essential information about the distribution, variability, and other properties of the population. For instance, the average online gaming time of high school students serves as a parameter, where high school students represent the population, and the average daily online gaming time represents a numerical summary of the population's behavior. Again, parameters are the numerical summary of a population. Similarly, the percentage of adults who prefer cats over dogs exemplifies parameters within statistical analysis. In this context, the entire adult population constitutes the group of interest, with the percentage of preference for cats serving as a numerical summary. A sample is a term in statistics that corresponds to a population. But it's important to note that a sample is a subset of a population. However, a sample not only represents a portion of a population, but also accurately reflects its characteristics. A sample is not just a random subset of a population, and it must appropriately capture the population's characteristics. In essence, a sample is a representative subset of a population that captures its essential characteristics and variability. Additionally, just as a sample corresponds to a population, a statistic also corresponds to a parameter. Thus, a statistic is a numerical summary of a sample. Here are examples of statistics similar to what you have seen earlier. In both examples, we have specific numbers like 1,000. If the entire number of high school students is 300,000 or 1 million, we only selected 1,000 students among them. Thus, a group of 1,000 high school students is a sample from the population. Consequently, statistics include a process of examining statistics of a sample and inferring parameters of a population based on the statistics of the sample. Thus, the fundamental flow of an inference begins with these two concepts below and eventually leads to the two concepts above. It's crucial to note that our primary focus lies in understanding what parameters are. When we calculate the mean of our sample data and so on, it's all geared towards inferring the parameters of the assumed population and explaining the population itself. As we explore statistics, we'll come across different types of data. These data sets represent our samples, and by employing techniques like visualization and other statistical methods, we'll exert insights about the population. We can categorize data types into two main categories, categorical data and quantitative data. Categorical data are often referred to as qualitative data, while quantitative data are commonly known as numerical data. Categorical data represents characteristics or attributes such as blood types like A, B, and O, occupations like teacher, doctor, and engineer, eye colors like blue, brown, and green, or grades like A, B, C, and so on. However, although both blood types and grades are considered categorical data, they possess different characteristics. While each value of both data types can be divided into categories, grades exhibit a hierarchical relationship, with an A being considered higher than a B, and a B higher than a C. Conversely, the relationships between blood types are not hierarchical. For instance, it's difficult to determine if blood type A is higher than blood type B or O in any meaningful sense. To distinguish between these data types, we further categorize categorical data into two subtypes, nominal data and ordinal data. Nominal data is a type of categorical data that represents categories or groups without any inherent order, ranking, or numerical significance. 
On the other hand, ordinal data is a type of categorical data that represents categories with a natural order or ranking. In other words, ordinal data are data such as satisfaction level that have a relative size that can be compared with other values. Unlike nominal data, ordinal data provide information about the relative magnitude or order of the categories. On the other hand, quantitative data can be represented numerically. However, just as we have both integers and real numbers in number systems, discrete data consists of whole numbers or integers and represents distinct and separate values. Discrete data can only take on specific distinct values without any intermediate values between them. Continuous data, on the other hand, is a type of quantitative data that can take on any value within a given range and can be measured infinitely precisely. The most significant feature of discrete data is that it is countable, such as frequencies and the number of defective items. In contrast, continuous data is uncountable. For instance, you cannot count every real number between 0 and 1. If you can count them all, please leave the number in the comments. They are uncountable because there are infinitely many real numbers between 0 and 1. Length and time serve as examples of continuous data. If you don't understand why they are not countable, let's think about it this way. Length, such as height, is not countable since they are countless numbers, for example, between 170 and 171 centimeters, such as 170.1, 170.11, and so on, depending on how accurately you're measuring heights. There are infinitely many possibilities within the range, and that's why length and heights are continuous data. Distinguishing between data types is crucial because the approach to data analysis varies significantly depending on the type of data. Most of the data we'll handle in this course, such as when practicing statistical inference, linear regression, hypothesis test, and so on, will be quantitative data. However, delving into the analysis of categorical data, which we won't cover in this course, requires exploring a separate subfield with its own unique approach and methodologies. Ensuring accurate categorization of data isn't just the first step. It's a crucial one in applying the appropriate statistical analysis technique. Therefore, the ability to distinguish between different types of data is essential. Furthermore, even though specific types of data may not be explicitly mentioned, as it progress through the lecture, you should develop the skill to differentiate between discrete data, characterized by distinct and separate values, and continuous data, which spans a continent of values based on the context and characteristics of data being discussed. Being able to classify data into appropriate types will make data analysis easier.